Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 132 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, we're going to go over the features of the import dialog box and the different things you could do to your images as you import them into Lightroom. Now you probably know that if you're in the library module of Lightroom, you go over here in the bottom of the left-hand panel and you have an import button. You could simply click on that and you import your images. If you're in any of the other modules of Lightroom, just go up to File and then down to Import Photos and Video and you'll get the import dialog box. Now, it is possible that your import dialog box does not look like mine. It's a lot smaller. In that case, if you look over here in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see there's this little up triangle. When I click on that, I have what they call the diminished view of the import dialog. This is not as feature-rich as the full view, so you won't have as many features available to you if you choose to use this import dialog. So I strongly suggest you use the full view, and to do that, go back over here into the bottom left-hand corner, and you'll see this downward-facing triangle. Click on that, and we'll get this full view. Now, the next thing you probably notice here is that all my images are dimmed out. That's because I actually already imported these images into Lightroom. And if Lightroom thinks you've already imported images, they'll be dimmed out. What you can do if you really want to import them again is go over here in the right-hand panel and you'll see that there's a checkbox. Don't import suspected duplicates. Just make sure that checkbox is off. And then you'll be able to import them again. Now, with that said, we're going to start over here on this left-hand panel, and this is our source. Where are our images? Usually, if you have your camera plugged into your computer, or you have an SD card plugged into the computer, or if you have um, another type of memory card plugged into a memory card reader that is plugged into your computer, Lightroom will automatically find those images, and it will show them automatically. If it doesn't, you'll have to find them. And on this left-hand panel is where you would go searching for them. And as you can see, it has every single hard drive and SD card that happens to be plugged into my computer. Macintosh HD is actually the internal drive on my iMac. I have a hard drive called Media Server. I have another one called Morganti Drive, another hard drive called Lightroom. So those are three external hard drives. I pl have plugged into my computer along with the internal hard drive and then of course it has the memory card which happens to be plugged into the computer and it found it automatically so again if you if Lightroom didn't find your images you may have to search for them over here and you would just open these expose triangles and go through the file system and drill down to your images and find them and when you find images you could drag as soon as you click on the folder they usually populate over here if they don't you may have to drag the folder over to this middle part and then all the images will show up but again usually you'll it'll find them automatically and you'll be set up just like this as soon as you open the import dialog Another little choice here is this checkbox, Eject After Import, because it is a, an SD card. I like that check, so I like to have my SD cards or other memory cards I happen to have plugged into the computer ejected automatically, so that's up to you. Now, moving on from there, we'll go up to this top area, and we have four choices, Copy as DNG, Copy, and Move and Add. Now, in this case, because I'm copying images from an SD card, only the first two choices are available, copy as DNG and copy. So what that means is the first one, copy as DNG, it will actually convert your images that are on the SD card, in this case they're Fuji RAW files. It will convert those Fuji RAW files to a DNG file, which is another type of RAW file that is kind of a universal RAW file that a lot of people like to use that was created by Adobe. Uh, if you'd like to do that, fine, go do that. I have numerous articles on my website and videos where I talk about the advantages and disadvantages of converting your files to DNG. Personally, I don't. I like to keep the original RAW format. Uh, the, I shoot Nikon and Fuji primarily, so my Nikon images are NEF files. My Fuji images are RAF files, so that's the way I like to keep it. But by all means, if you like to do DNG, then you would do it here. Now, I mentioned that move and add are, will be grayed out when you're trying to copy from an SD card. Typically, those will be when you're copying images from a hard drive that is already on the system. 
So you may have, let's say, a hard drive that has some images on it. You want to move those images into your Lightroom library. So you would use move, and it will actually take them off wherever they are. Let's say, they're, let's say for the sake of argument, I had some images on media server. It would take them off the media server and will copy them or put them wherever I show in this destination panel, which we'll get to in a minute. You could do add. Add will leave them exactly where they are. So if I have images on media server and I use add, they'll stay there. They won't move. And then they'll be added to the Lightroom catalog. And they'll show up in Lightroom, but they'll be located on that media server uh, uh, drive. A lot of people like to use add. They prefer to have Lightroom closed. They like to be inside of Windows Explorer or Mac Finder, and they like to create a folder wherever they want their images to be. They like to move their images from their SD cards or memory cards over to the folder that they created themselves. Then they'll open up Lightroom. Then they'll go into the import dialog and they'll add them to Lightroom. They already have them in the folder they want, and they'll be added to the Lightroom catalog. Actually, I used to do that when I first started using Lightroom. I used to do it that way, but now I don't. I copy them from the SD card, and I use all the functionality over here on the right panel, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, right below that, we have different views of what we're going to see down here. Now, right now, I'm going to turn back on Don't Import Suspected Duplicates just so I could better demonstrate what these three things do. Right now you'll see all photos, and all photos are shown. They are dimmed out because they are already imported, but they're being shown. If I click on New Photos, you can see since those aren't new, they're already imported into Lightroom. They're not even showing up anymore. Only images that are new. This is what you would use if you don't delete images off your SD card. If you you know, shoot and you, you just leave the images on your SD card and then you put it back in your camera and shoot some more and then go into Lightroom and you have images on that SD card that are already in the Lightroom and some that aren't, then you would probably prefer to use this view of new photos and then only the ones that are new will show up down here. Destination folders, as you can see over here, it's going to show a folder of where it's being sent to and you could uh, sort them that way too. Typically almost no one I know does that, but you'd use all photos or new photos. So that is that part. Now just down here at the bottom real quick, we'll go to this left hand side and you'll see that there's a grid view and then there's like a single view. And let me turn that off for a minute. You could use this if you want to pre-call your images. You want to call them before you are importing them. So what you could do is you could click on this one here and you could either click right here, this icon right here, or you could hit the E key on your keyboard for this loop view. And then you could say, well, do I like this? And if you want to include it in the import, make sure it's checked. If you don't want to include it in the import, uncheck it. Then you could move to your next image by hitting your right arrow key. And you could do this for each image and call them from here as you go. Now, uh, once you're done with that, you want to go back to the grid view. You could click now this grid, or you could hit the G key on your keyboard, and you'll have grid view. And you can see that I deselected that when I was in the loop view, and you can see it doesn't have the checkbox anymore. So you could pre-call them uh, down here. If you prefer to use this grid view or this loop view, you could click those icons, or you could hit G and or E, respectively. You could also check all of them or uncheck all of them very quickly right there. Uh, you could sort them by capture time, check uh, state, file name, media type, and you could make your thumbnails larger or smaller. So that's this bottom part. Now, up here on the right is some different file handling and different things you could do to the images as you import them. And if you're not seeing all the tabs here, what you could do is just right click on any of these, let's say file naming, just to the left of file, just right click, and you'll see that we have these check marks next to file handling, renaming, apply during import destination. Make sure all those are checked, and you'll see all these uh, tabs over here. So that goes to anything in Lightroom. If you're ever missing a tab, just right click and you'll have these check marks so you could go through. 
Now at the very top here we have file handling. First of all, it's usually going to default up here to the last spot you imported images. And if it doesn't, you could open this up and you could find it. As you could see, it looks uh, rather confusing. And you could drill down by going from your desktop to whatever. And, you know, usually this doesn't fail me. I just leave that alone because I could drill down right here in the destination area also. So usually I don't even mess with this. Even if the odd time Lightroom doesn't seem to know where I want to send the images, I do it down here, not up here. Now file handling. You first choice is this drop down of previews. You have minimal and then some all the way up to one to one. One to one previews are your largest preview and they're going to take up the most disk disk space. But when you go from image to image, let's say you're culling your images and you're hitting that right arrow key and you're going image to image, this is after you import them, all right? You're in the folder and you're going image to image they'll render faster. So Lightroom will be faster with one-to-one -one images, but it will use up more disk space. A compromise is standard images. You also could do embedded and sidecar, which is more applicable to raw files and DNG files, and minimal, which is just going to create a very small preview. So it will not use up a lot of disk space, but it will take the image a little longer to render as you're paging through them or you click on one down in the film strip. So from this point you would choose what type of preview you want to build as you import them. The bigger the preview of course, as I mentioned, it takes up the most disk space, but it also takes you longer to import. It will import all the images, but then over in the left hand panel you'll see that your Lightroom is creating previews and it may take it a long time to create previews if you have a big large import that you've done and you may not be able to close Lightroom down right away or you may not want to close Lightroom down right away because it's still creating previews like several minutes after your import so keep that in mind the next choice is build smart previews this is for those of us that have our Lightroom library located on an external drive my Lightroom library is on an external drive that I called Lightroom well if you're ever in this situation where you have your Lightroom library on that external drive, but you don't have that drive plugged in, what you'll find is you won't be able to edit your images because it needs the drive to be plugged in. Unless you build smart previews. If you build smart previews, it will allow you to edit images when the source image isn't available, meaning when that hard drive is not plugged in. A lot of people like to do this to traveling. They don't want to bring their their uh, hard drive with them. They don't want to lose it or something. So they leave it home, but they want to edit images while they're on the airplane or something like that. So they just build smart previews. Then they're able to edit them and their images are safely kept at home. And then when they get back, they plug in their hard drive. All those uh, edits are shown and, and rendered properly. So that's up to you. Smart previews do take up a lot of disk space on your local drive. So keep that in mind. Don't import suspected duplicates. We talked about that. Make a second copy too. As you're importing your images to wherever you keep them, you could back them up automatically by creating a second copy to, let's say, another hard drive or maybe to the internal drive or somewhere else. And that's what you would do here. You would click here and you would tell Lightroom where you want to do it. You could choose the folder. So you could do that here. You could add them to a collection. A lot of people like to do this, especially if you went on vacation somewhere. You went to Niagara Falls and you have all these pictures of Niagara Falls and you want them in a Niagara Falls collection. You would do that here. Click Add to Collection. You would click this little plus sign. You could create a new collection now. Call it Niagara Falls or whatever and import them into Lightroom and have them added to that collection automatically. So that is what has to do with this file handling. Now file renaming can be a little complicated. Personally, I don't rename my files as I import them, but many people like to. And I really think that file renaming might be good for an, um, a video all on its own because there's a lot of instances where you could rename files, not only in the import dialog, but you could import rename files actually in Lightroom. And it uses the same formats here and it seems to be confusing a lot of people. First of all, there's some templates here. These are more or less presets of where you are of different formats. You could have a custom name with a, 
or a custom name with an original file number or a custom name in a sequence and so on. If you don't see all these presets, go to edit and you'll see this file name template editor. And if you go to this drop down, you'll see restore default presets. Click on that, then click done. And then you'll have all these presets here that you could use or you could create your own with custom text and start numbers and um, say how you want the extension. Leave it as it is or do a lowercase or uppercase extension. That is, of course, in this case, the .raf. I could leave it as it is, uppercase or lowercase. Um, again, I think file renaming is something that I should do in a video all by itself, but be aware that you can do it here, and this is something you may want to experiment with if that's something you want to do. Now, the next part is what you're going to apply to the image during import. You could apply develop settings and metadata settings. Now, if you bought my presets, you may want to add one of my presets to all the images as you import them. So you could go down here and you could automatically add a preset. So all the images will kind of get um, processed for you automatically as you're importing them. Now, that, you know, that's that, uh, develop settings. A lot of people confuse these. There's another one called metadata presets. These are the actual metadata of the image. And in this, I have one that I've created called import preset. And I've done videos on creating import presets and or metadata presets. I happen to call mine import preset. You could call it anything you'd like because I apply this during the import. What it is, it's my name, my address, my studio address, my studio phone number, my email address, and that the image is copyrighted and all rights are reserved. And that is all added to e all these images as they're imported into Lightroom. So again, I, um, I have video on how to do this. You go to edit presets and you could edit it here and you could have all this info uh, changed or, or set up any way you'd like it to be uh, set up. So uh, just do that with the metadata. Now again, I do import preset. The other thing you could do is you could add keywords to the image as you import them. So if you were in a park, this is especially true or applicable for those of you that sell stock photography and it requires keywords when you upload the images to the stock server, uh, stock uh, place you're dealing with, you know, Dreams, Times, iStock Photo, places like that. They want you to have keywords. Well, you could do it right when you import the images en masse. And so let's say you have a bunch of images from the park. So you would have park, you could have nature, you could have trees, you could have grass, all these different pre keywords you could add. One thing that I've just recently started to do is I put my copyright here also. Now it is in the metadata. It says copyright Anthony Morganti, but I also put it as a keyword. And on a Mac, all you have to do is hit option G and you'll get that C symbol, the copyright symbol. And you can see it defaulted because I've added this before. Uh, so it added at copyright, the copyright Anthony Morganti. Now on a PC, I'm not sure how you would get that copyright symbol, but I'm sure someone in the description or in the comments below this video will mention how you would do that with a Windows computer. And you could get that copyright symbol and you could add it, uh, your copyright to the keywords if you uh, want to. Now the next part is destination. Where are we sending these images? This is so confusing to folks, but uh, let's try to break it down to make it as simple as possible. First of all, you have to find your drive where you want the images to be. On mine, I have an external hard drive called Lightroom. So it's right here, and because I've imported to this, this drive before, it defaulted to that drive. If yours doesn't default to that drive, you're going to have to find it here. If it's not listed, you're going to have to hit this plus uh, sign up here and actually that's that's only for folders so I apologize that it should be listed if you have an external drive and you're gonna have to drill down through where it is uh, to find it what you could do then is you could hit that plus sign to create a new folder on that drive if you'd like to now what I do is I create a new folder a different way so let's say these images are um, from Chicago, all right? I don't have any folders for Chicago and I wanna put them in the Chicago folder. 
So what I do is I click on the root folder. This is the main folder that contains all my images. It's, I call it Lightroom RAW files. So you can see it automatically put in a date. That's because I have right here organized by date and I have a date format of year, month, day. I do it that way because the when you have the year first it will sort them properly as far as time. So 2016's will be above 2017. So it'll be in chronological order. You also could change that up if you want to all these different types of formats. Um, so you could pick one whichever one you prefer uh, to use. I like that one. So that is that. Now you could see under Lightroom RAW files it's trying to just put them in as that date. But I mentioned that let's just say for the sake of argument that this is from Chicago. So I'm going to click into subfolder and you can see now I have a little choice here and I would write CHI Chicago. Okay. Now if you go down you'll see it's going to create a new folder. That's what that little plus sign means called Chicago and inside of that folder it's going to be October 4th, 2017 and it's going to import 178 images into that folder. So that's how you would get it to where you want it to be. That's why I never use this plus sign and why I was a little confused about its use. So that hopefully will help you get the images where you want them to be a little easier uh, by doing that. Now there's many times now this these images here just happen to be of Buffalo not Chicago so I may not want them in that Chicago folder I don't want them in a subfolder at all I just want them by date in the Buffalo folder so I'll go to the Buffalo folder and I'll click on it and there the, it added right there see Buffalo and it's just adding them so instead of being clicked on the root folder I'm in the actual folder I want them in, Buffalo. Now you may not have your Lightroom set up by destination like I do. Mine's set up by destination or by subject, like I have art shots, I have Audubon Lake, Barcelona Harbor Beach, Bennett Beach, Big Six Mile Creek, Bird Island Pier, all these different locations. You may have yours set up differently and then you would have to figure out the best way to utilize this into subfolder and organize by date if you so choose. So that's the way I do mine. Once that's all done, I'll just click import and it will then do everything that I've uh, told it to do. It will add my import preset. It will add my copyright as a keyword. I'm not adding any developed settings to the image. I'm going to create standard previews and it's all going to get done. Now again, you could um, be adding a second copy to another location. You could be adding it to a collection and you could be renaming the files as you go and add a develop setting you know, maybe on yours. So you could do all those things as you import your images. So that's really it for this video. I hope that kind of cleared up some confusion there might be about the import dialog and the different things you could do with the import dialog. Um, hope that helps. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.